Ladies and gentlemen, we're broadcasting live. We're going to do a song here. Oh, yeah. The title is, I Know Not Why God's Wondrous Corinthians 11, 13, 14, and 15 is about. They're preaching another Jesus. It's just pathetic how they're 
indoctrinated into this believing. Move out into the street and live. The Lord will have you to live out, and your little baby, live out in the street. And, uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with going outside or even in here, raising your hands, praising the Lord. Not a thing in the room. But, normal people don't do that. If you want to, go for it. But when you hear an experience like you ever had, it's, that, there's a serious problem there. But we've all experienced some of those. If you've ever lived a little bit, and I think you have. But back to my major point about the uh, fellowship. And that's another good thing about coming to a conference, no matter where it's at. We've got some of the best preachers in the grace movement. And uh, here, and you're going to hear some fantastic messages. It's just wonderful to, to be able to listen to someone. And I, as a pastor, I like listening to someone. I need it. Do you need it? I do. I don't care how long you've been in the ministry. We need it. Paul says, pray for me. I'm telling you, pray for all these pastors. and Pray for each other. Well, without further ado, the man Lynn Sasser from Alabama Community Grace Church, correct? Yes, I mean, he had a couple of conferences over there, and it was so far out into the woods we had to pipe sunlight out there. <laughs> it, it's out there, ain't it, brother? It's out there, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Amongst the hardwoods. <laughs> Come on out and preach to us, Lynn. No, he's good. He's, uh, I've been knowing Lynn for probably 55 years. Wow. Really. And we got lost in there after after grammar school, but uh, and then I found him again, and he found grace, and he might even tell you about being a Baptist preacher one time. I don't know what he's going to say, but good. but you may not go to sleep during this session. <laughs> now I'm going to talk about what the Holy Ghost has showed me from the written word. And we all realize that the Holy Ghost is your teacher. And if you're saved, that is, uh, if you trusted the gospel of your salvation, <clears throat> then you're, you're a sinner. If you commit your salvation to the Lord Jesus Christ, trust nothing, mind nothing, then you are sealed with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of the Lord. They are redemption. Amen. You've been baptized into Christ by the Holy Spirit, and you cannot get out of it. Amen. I thought that good news, wouldn't you? That's great. Amen. <clears throat> now, so I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to talk to you tonight. Uh, how long have I got there? A long time. Oh. I'll, you'll see a sign like this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you're going to give the time to it. We're not the age of Now. First, first thing I want to do, I want to go to Matthew chapter 15. And uh, we, we want to find out something here about, about what Jesus Christ said about mankind. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. And if, if, if you hear the whole thing, and, and I mention this time and time again, to folks that listens to me every Sunday in the Bible class we have on, on Thursday night. I said, well, you might as well get real. Get real. Get real. Mankind is wicked. Amen. He is extremely sinful. There's nothing that's good that comes out of his mouth. Jesus said in Matthew 15, oh, by the way, now, folks, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I need to say to you, how about you? Amen. I got to have one. Bless God, I got one. Amen. Amen. Amen, I got one. Matthew 15, I want you to look at something here in verse 19. For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts, murders, adulterers, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemers, these are the things which befall a man, but he can eat everybody he wants to. <laughs> Ain't gonna hurt it. Of course, now they was under that long, yeah. 
Are you wrong? I don't read it that well. A man can eat frogs, he can eat his snakes, he can eat anything he wants to eat, everything clean can. But I was raised eating frogs and snakes. I was born with red right. You had some hogs going. Yeah. But I, I tell you, Jesus nailed mankind down, didn't he? Mankind is extremely wicked, folks. And if mankind could save himself, if you could save yourself, if I could save myself, then Jesus didn't have to die for all my sins. He didn't have to be the blood sacrifice for all my sins, did he? No, sir. That's not the case. I'm a sinner by nature. Let me ask you a question. Has the Holy Ghost convinced you as he can, as he, well, what you call convicted you that you can't save yourself? Has he did that? He done a day's work, didn't he? A day's work ain't gonna hurt him. Let me tell you so, folks, and I mentioned this the other day. I'm glad that I'm glad that Jesus nailed those things to the cross that was contrary to us. The Ten Commandments was contrary to us. Every time I read them and every time I look at them, I thank God that I've got a Savior. I bet you. When I look at them, I find out that I'm wicked from the word go. When I look at them, I find out there's things that come out of my mind that's sufficient for God. Mm. Boy, am I glad I got these teeth in here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you folks out here tonight, where are we at? Where, 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 where are we at? I know we're in Florida. Oh, oh, oh. We're down here in the bar beach. And I guarantee you, everybody's in the same shape I'm in. Amen, amen. Hmm? Amen. Ain't we all got the nature of Adam? There ain't no way I can save myself. He passed on a nature to us, bless God, that'll send a man to hell. Think about it. Don't you know God knew what he was doing? Amen. Ain't you glad he done us a favor? Amen. When he delivered up his son to the cross, nailed him to the cross, charged all my sins to his account before I was ever born, all my sins was in the future, all your sins was in the future, bless God, and he destroyed my sins at Calvary, and he also destroyed old Ian Sasser too. While he was getting that done, he got everything done. He destroyed this flesh, folks, that he hates. Amen. Mm. How many folks go get real and say, look here, I'm no good? Amen. Huh? <laughs> well, I'm top of the list. When the thing comes out of my mind, you know what? Let me get back up here. Paul, go to Ephesians chapter 1. <clears throat> Paul, being the apostle to the Gentiles, and how many folks are familiar with Gentiles? <laughs> Anybody familiar with Gentiles? How deep into the scriptures do you go around the Bible? Don't think about it. You uh, are. I'm going to tell y'all now what the Holy Ghost has showed me from the Word. That's what I'm going to say tonight. Now, either a man is uh, justified by the Word that comes out of his mouth, or either he's condemned by the words that comes out of his mouth. Are you ready? Amen. Now, if, if you if you will study the Bible, and a lot of folks have a problem understanding this, 
This is one thing that Holy Ghost straightened out my mind from studying the Word. If you, if you study the Word, you in the Bible, you're going to find three types of Gentiles. You're going to find a Gentile who was a proselyte. Alright? You're going to find a Gentile who was religious like Cornelius. Then you're going to find a Gentile that was extremely pagan. We're going to find out that what, what the, what the Apostle Paul in prison was, he was going into some Gentiles, he had done out the word from the Lord, and he was going into them Gentiles, and he was going to preach the gospel of the grace of God to them. That's what he's going to preach to them, folks. And he made this comment in his Ephesian letter. Oh, by the way, now, when he wrote his Ephesian letter, Israel had already fallen. Amen. Israel had already went down the drain. Israel had already got everything. I mean, they, God doesn't charge them with unbelief. He said, you're not my people anymore. God has no favored people in the dispensation of grace. Amen. And if a man don't get to God today, he won't get to God through Israel. Amen. Israel has fallen. If he's going to get to God today, he's going to get to God through the gospel of his salvation. Or he ain't going to get there. And somebody's got to preach it. Somebody's got to declare the grace of God. Somebody's got to declare the fact that Jesus hung on the cross and God charged my sins and God charged your sins to his account. Amen. And he destroyed them. And I'm going to tell you something else. When I read the Word of God, I get into what my apostles got to tell me about the, the, the gospel of my salvation, how I'm saved by the grace of God, plus nothing, minus nothing. And I find out that God's righteous. I find out that God will not charge my sins against me. I'll find out that God will charge, He charged all my sins against His Son. And God's righteous, He will not charge it against me. Are you hearing that? Amen. That's the righteousness of God. But I'm going to tell you what. Before God did that, He had to be just in doing so. Mm -hmm. I enjoy a lot of boards with folks. It's that hatred, brother. <laughs> Yeah. I don't tell you what I've done with a young man. I'm telling you, folks, the Holy Ghost has taught me something. Amen. You know what? I'm looking for him to keep on teaching me. Why? I'm sealed with him until the day of redemption. Now, when you get into this Ephesian letter, <clears throat> how do you all familiar with all during your ministry? It's getting real now. I was looking at y'all bald eyeballs and it's getting real. Where's Paul going in his early ministry? Where? Son of God. Who was he after? He was after the election of grace, wasn't he, brother? Didn't he get that election of grace? That's what he said in Romans. He said, the election of grace has obtained it. Tell me what he said. I'm telling you, I'm, folks, I'm telling you what the Holy Ghost has showed me from where. Mm -hmm. I'll enjoy a lot of horns. You hear me? Now, when you get to this Ephesian letter, Paul was accused of something, wasn't he? They thought he took an Ephesian into the temple. Have you read that over in the, in the book of Acts? Took that Ephesian into the temple. He'd done, he'd done hurt the temple. <laughs> Boy, he done, he done hurt the temple. Boy, he done spoil that thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> but the problem was, when Jesus died on the cross, that God got the temple ring. Yeah. Oh, how many of you are familiar with the gospel of the circumcision? You know the difference between the gospel of circumcision and the gospel of down circumcision? There's a difference. They're not the same. That's right. Nowhere here. What does the gospel of circumcision consist of? Who was it that God made the New Testament with? What nation of people was it? Israel. Who? Israel. Israel. Mm. Yeah. You know, I, I'm going to show you this, and I want to mention this about the gospel of circumcision because it ain't got nothing to do with us. It has all been Israel. God was going to bring in a new covenant, New Testament of Israel. That's the reason I don't come in. Are you hearing me? Hey, to me. Hey, to me! Amen. I'm saved by the grace without any ordinances, folks. Amen. Nothing! Don't grab no ordinances on old sassy. He ain't gonna have me. I'm free in Christ. I've been baptized by the one spirit into the one body. I'm so far in Christ I couldn't get out of him glory to God if I wanted to. Amen. Think about it. Matter of fact, don't worry. Bless God, I'm satisfied. I'm, I'm relaxed in the grace of God. He can't see my mind. <laughs> I mean, his son, when he sees his son, he sees me. Amen. I mean, his son, he sees me holy. He sees me sanctified. He sees me justified. Don't he see you, brother Jackie, girl? Amen. We're sanctified, anyway. We're justified. Amen. You can't separate sanctification, justification, Lord. You can't separate it. You can't separate redemption from it. Why? Because we are perfect in Christ Jesus. Amen. When Jesus died for all my sins, he went to hell, didn't he? Amen. Then one day, three days, three nights later, God made the scissors to him, didn't he? <laughs> Cut all those sins loose from him. And he said, my God, this is a righteous man in hell. Mm. And you know what God done? He fulfilled his promise, didn't he, brother? Amen. You know what God did? How many folks are familiar with the, with the, with the faith of Christ? Amen. Amen. I, I want to tell you, I want to tell you something about that faith of Christ. Bless God. You and I might have problems in his flesh. Our faith wavers, but bless God, his never did. It won't ever. I'm saved because of the faith of Christ. It is the faith of Christ that brought about the gospel of my salvation. It was him that believed God would raise him from the dead. When he died for all our sins, he died a sinner, bless God. Did he? He went to hell all our sins from to him. Some of these great preachers say, well, he just didn't go to hell. Paul said he didn't go to hell. Paul did say he went to hell. He said that would be chapter 4. He said before he ascended on high, he went down to the bottom. Amen. You know what he said? And then God circumcised him. We ain't never had the Holy Ghost in our sinful nature until we trusted the gospel. And then God got him, got sealed with him. The same one that's going to bring him to come to Israel, the same one I'm sealed with you, under their redemption. That's what Paul said. You know what he said? On top of that, I'm that new creature. I'm that one new man. Mm hmm. Pieces chapter 1, verse 1. How many of y'all know something about the English you speak? Now, I don't know much, folks, but I do know this. 
When I read Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1, I find out that Paul was talking to two types of Gentiles. One was already in the synagogue. They were proselytes and they were going to come the promise. Are you ready? All right. Then he's writing to some more and he's writing to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now Paul, uh, you think, now there, there is a, there, something else here out. The reason why Paul had to go to prison was, and what not because they, they accused of putting that Ephesian into the temple and corrupting the temple, you know. The fact is, these Ephesians that he was going to preach the gospel to, the gospel of grace to, they could not find their salvation nowhere in the scriptures. Amen. Are you with me? They could not find their salvation over in the scriptures. <laughs> How many folks believe the Bible? Don't you agree? How many of you believe the Bible around the Bible? Absolutely. Thank you, brother. I believe the whole bread does. <laughs> How many of y'all believe that Paul was never associated with the twelve apostles? He had apostleship on his own. Amen. Boy, he had a whole he had a different message. <coughs> didn't he? Yeah. Old Peter wrote about over about Paul. He said, What Paul what Paul says is so hard to understand. You know why? If Peter wanted to find out why, if Peter wanted to find out something, if he wanted to find out why that the kingdom has been postponed, then all Peter's got to do is ask Paul, and Paul will tell him. He said, This thing's been postponed now. He said, We're entering into a different dispensation. We're entering into the dispensation of the grace of God. Mm -hmm. <coughs> By the way, now, I mean, folks better get real on this, don't they? Gonna, they're going to have a problem with God Almighty. Anybody that preaches Jesus in any other way than the Apostle Paul preached it Curse. is in trouble with God. Curse. Mm. Yes. We don't know. We don't know the Lord Jesus Christ after the flesh. Amen. We don't know Him like that. We don't know Him in His earthly ministry to Israel. We don't know Him like that. We don't know Him according to His earthly ministry. He said, don't go to Gentiles such as us. Didn't hear what He said? Matthew 10 verse 5. We don't know Him. We don't know Him after the flesh. We know him after his heavenly ministry as he appeared to the apostle Paul and gave him the doctrines of faith. Just as God gave Moses the law face to face, then God, Jesus Christ, gave Paul the doctrines of grace face to face. Amen. He felt the back when he came out of his mouth. Well, I'm telling you so. Bless God, I got to save you, folks. You take a good man to get this up. I got to save you, folks. My mind is still corrupt, but I got to save you. Jesus done everything you be done, Lord, save me. Amen. Getting back, getting back up here, Paul. Paul writing to some. Old Gentiles. I heard a man say something one time. This is years ago. I'm talking about years ago. Talking about the early 80s. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say this. He was talking about going into Jamaica down there. And he was talking about people down there living hard. 
He said some of them, you know, some of them told hell for so long to look like Eagle Falls. Well, this is who Paul was preaching to or going to preach to in Ephesians. They were pagan. Extremely pagan. They were known as dogs. They was a dog. They was they was they was much dog about them until they become doggy. They ain't no. Hey, a Jew hated them. They hated them. But you know what? When Christ went to Calvary, did you know he died for? Did you know that God charged their sins to his account? God charged those Ephesian sins to the Son of God's account. God had to make him to be sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Well, I still don't have any righteousness. But God charged the righteousness of His Son to my account, my name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. He said right here, Paul the Apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are Ephesus, to the faith and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Have you all figured that over in hand? Now, it's been 50 years, it's been over 50 years since I've been in school. You know, some of us have got more than I've ever remember. I don't know what this and hand means. It's a, it's a thing to connect something. He's talking to two groups of Gentiles. Now, anybody can't see this, bless God, don't ever see it. They just stop it. Mm -hmm. Did I say that out of that? They stop it. There we go. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm going to tell you something, folks. I'm not about to be normal for the religious who we do. Amen. I've got one foot over the ladder. He who didn't have nothing in the grave that could slip at any time. <laughs> so don't give me all the religious foolishness. Amen. I've got the other side of that, thank God. Now watch what Paul said here. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. Now here's something that people need to understand about these Ephesians that he's writing to that they could not find their salvation over in the scriptures because they had never, they were never allied with the nation of Israel. They had didn't know anything about the covenant God made with Abraham. It wouldn't do any good anyway when this letter was written because Israel had already fallen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And if a Jew is going to be saved today, you've got to get a Gentile preach the gospel to him. That's right. <laughs> Why? To provoke him to jealousy. Amen. That's what's going to happen. Now, I mentioned something about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. The ministry of the Holy Ghost is to convict a sinner man and a sinner woman they cannot save themselves. Just as God's done. I'm glad the Holy Ghost showed me one day I could not save myself. As he showed you that. Man, that's what I told you. Thank you, morning. Hell's a real place. You know what's real? Let the fire's real too, isn't it? Now, I want, I want to get to the meat here. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, God chose to save these Gentiles before the foundation of the world, and he knew who was going, he, he knew who was supposed to preach the gospel to him. Didn't he know that? And he goes to familiar with the foreknowledge of God. Amen. 
God foreseen those who would believe the gospel of their salvation when it was preached to them, and He foreseen those who would not believe the gospel of their salvation. And those He foreseen believe the gospel of their salvation, He justified them then. Amen. Somebody needs to get over Romans chapter 11, they need to get over Romans 10. Well, the 9, 10, and 11, what they need to get hold of, because Paul's talking about being Jews, but at the same time, he's, he's talking about the full knowledge of God. Is what he's talking about. Now, watch this now. In verse 4, verse 5, brother, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Christ Jesus to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, he had pleasure in saving a no good, sorry something as I am. <laughs> oh, by, by the way, and I need to just make that about you, okay? People are trying to worship the Lord Jesus Christ through the flesh instead of their spirit. Amen. Let me talk familiar with that. They're trying to worship the Lord Jesus Christ through their flesh. And they're being rejected. They're not trying to worship Him through their spirit. There's such a thing as a dispensational worship. Right? I'm going to show you something. Right. <laughs> Paul is giving these Ephesian, these pagan Ephesian Gentiles some information here that they need that they can't please God in the flesh. Now, now he, he, here's a fellow that I've up here, and uh, I, I want to put it up here big enough you can see him because. I'm going to put a smile on his face. George is happy. Why? Bless God, he heard the gospel one day and believed it. Now, where, 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 where is your spirit located today? I'll tell you what, most folks that see mine go, they ain't got no haircut. <laughs> Right here. Right here. That's where it's at. That's where your soul is at. The other man, the other man. The other man. Look here. When you trusted the gospel, that's when the Holy Spirit locked on to your spirit. Right here. The Holy Spirit. On to your spirit. Right there. You see it. Now, Justification that Paul taught in Romans is the same justification that fit these Gentiles over here. These pagans. Right? Christ died by his sins. Oh, by the way, now, let me ask you a question, and I'm, I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to read you a verse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at chapter 3, verse 9. I'm not going to read 8 in there. I'm going to read 8 and 9. Not to me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to make all men see. What is the fellowship of the mystery? Which was which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God? Let me ask you a question now. And by the way, now, before anything, you know, and I'm glad to do this. And I always ask the question and I always say this. I says, now if you don't know how to answer this question, it's best you don't say nothing. <laughs> I 
You know what? God's going to hold them accountable for what comes out of that mouth.
And I'm going to tell you something else. Of course, in Romans chapter 6, have you ever read that? How in the world can a dead man sin? Mm. <laughs> Ain't that what he said? How in the world can a dead man sin? God forbid that some religious preacher charge your sins to your account and try to hold you to an altar. This is an idea. I've got to say, Jesus done it all. Every round, sir. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother, man. Let's take a break, guys.